You may have heard that ogres are like onions because they have many layers. Well, earth is the same way. Earth is made up of several different layers, each of which has unique properties. Let's start from the inside and work our way out. Earth has a core, but this is really two distinct parts, the inner core and the outer core. Both parts of the core are made up of mostly iron and some nickel. The difference is that in the inner core, those minerals are solid, and in the outer core, they're liquid. The inner core of the earth is incredibly hot, so hot that if you try to dig a hole to China, you'd burn up on your way through the earth. What's amazing about the inner core is that even though it's about as hot as the surface of the sun, there's so much pressure from the weight of the world pushing down on it that it can't melt. This is the same reason that water in a pressure cooker doesn't boil, no matter how hot it gets. The outer core is also made up of iron and nickel, but it's quite different because it is a liquid. This is because there is much less pressure on this layer than the one below it. That outer core adds a lot of pressure to the inner core. Though the flow of this liquid layer is very slow moving, about a few kilometers a year, it is what produces Earth's magnetic field. Our north and south poles exist because of this liquid outer core, even though it's almost 2,000 miles below us. Sitting on top of the outer core, we find the mantle. This layer is by far the thickest layer of Earth, about 1,800 miles thick. It also makes up about 85% of Earth's volume. Like the core, the mantle contains mostly iron, but in the form of silicate rocks. You might be surprised to learn that this rock actually moves like a fluid, similar to how silly putty moves. If you poke silly putty hard, it acts like a solid, but if you slowly pull it apart, it acts like a liquid. We call this ability of rock to move without breaking plasticity. The mantle can also be divided into two portions, the upper mantle and the lower mantle. The lower mantle is completely solid, because like the solid inner core of Earth, the pressure is just too great for it to melt and flow. The upper mantle is also known as the asthenosphere, which flows as convection currents. Convection occurs in all fluids and is the rising of warm particles and sinking of cool particles. So as the material in the upper mantle warms, it rises straight up, and as it rises, it cools and then sinks back down. This convection flow of the asthenosphere has a large impact on Earth's lithosphere, the outermost layer of the planet. The lithosphere is only about 60 miles thick and contains both the crust and a small portion of the upper mantle. The lithosphere is very rigid. It does not flow like the asthenosphere, but instead floats on top of it like ice on a pond. This layer of Earth is broken up into several different pieces like a jigsaw puzzle called tectonic plates. The convection currents below in the mantle move these plates around on the surface of Earth. Though the flow of the asthenosphere is on par with the snail's pace, these enormous plates running into each other is what causes earthquakes, volcanoes, and mountain range formation. The crust itself, which is contained in the lithosphere, can also be divided into two parts. Have you noticed a pattern yet? We live on the continental crust, and the ocean floor is made up of the oceanic crust. The continental crust is thicker than the oceanic crust, but it's made up of rock that is less dense than the oceanic crust, so it sits on top of it above sea level. Still not a believer? It might help to think of the Earth's crust like a cargo ship in the ocean. An empty ship floats higher in the water than a ship that has been loaded up with goods to carry across the sea, right? Well, in this analogy, the continental crust is the empty ship sitting higher on top of the liquid mantle, and the oceanic crust is the fully loaded ship sinking down lower into this liquid layer. It's all because of gravity. Compared to the rest of the planet, the crust is really quite thin. If Earth were an apple, the crust would only be about as thick as the apple's skin. It's so relatively small, in fact, that if Earth were the size of a cue ball, it would be just as smooth. This is because all of those giant mountains on the surface are insignificant compared with Earth's overall radius. Earth can be divided into three main layers, the core, the mantle, and the crust. Each of these layers can be further divided into two parts, the inner and outer core, the upper and lower mantle, and the continental and oceanic crust. 
Both the inner and outer core are made up of mostly iron and a little bit of nickel. The inner core is solid while the outer core is liquid. This liquid flowing deep down below us is what produces Earth's electromagnetic current. And it's pretty hot in the core, about as hot as the surface of the sun. The mantle is the thickest layer of Earth, making up about 85% of Earth's volume. The lower mantle is pretty solid stuff, while the upper mantle moves around like silly putty. This movement of rock without breaking is called plasticity, and the liquid part of the mantle is referred to as the asthenosphere. On top of the asthenosphere is the lithosphere, which also contains the entire crust. The slow-moving convection currents in the asthenosphere move the tectonic plates of the lithosphere around like ice on a pond, causing earthquakes and volcanoes on the surface. Though the continental crust is much thicker than the oceanic crust, it's made of material that is far less dense. This means that the continental crust floats higher on the liquid mantle below than does the heavier oceanic crust that sinks down like a loaded cargo ship.